Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Examination for oral cancer should be a part of every dental examination. It takes only a few minutes to perform, but it may produce a life-saving finding. To uh, illustrate the magnitude of the oral cancer problem, let's look at some data that have been supplied recently by the American Cancer Society. Among the estimated 675,000 new cases of cancer in the United States in 1976, there were 24,000 new cases of oral cancer. Of those 24,000 new cases of oral cancer, 950 occurred in Michigan. In 1976, cancer accounted for an estimated 370,000 deaths in the United States. Oral cancer accounted for 8,000 of those deaths. In Michigan alone, 300 persons died of oral cancer in 1976. The importance of early detection is illustrated on this chart. It shows that the chances for cure of oral cancer are reduced sharply when the cancer has spread from a localized site to regional lymph nodes. Even when cancer is localized, the chances of cure are far better if the cancer is very small. All of this, of course, underscores the importance of early detection and therefore frequent oral examinations for cancer. Now let's turn to our patient and demonstrate the procedure for the cancer examination of the mouth. We begin our examination by inspection of the face uh, for symmetry and uh, take note of any obvious alterations in symmetry or swellings uh, that are apparent to us. Then we take a closer look at the skin in all areas and uh, include the ears as well as the area over the forehead, over the eyes, and the bridge of the nose. We can point out an area here of change on the skin that suggests perhaps some excessive exposure to sunlight in the past, a little area of increased pigmentation with some scaling on the surface. We next go to the palpation of the parotid gland area, and we're uh, interested here in noting any evidence of nodules uh, that may be felt in the substance of the gland. The pre preauricular lymph nodes also are found uh, in this area just anterior to the ear. We continue our palpation for lymph nodes into the submandibular area, forward into the digastric and into the submental areas. Then uh, we'll have our patient tip his head forward and uh, relaxing the sternocleidomastoid muscles so that we can palpate for lymph no nodes just uh, anterior uh, to that muscle. Then we proceed to the more specific area of the oral cavity and we inspect first the uh, mucocutaneous junction uh, of the lip. There should be a sharp line of demarcation between the vermilion and the skin and uh, the vermilion its, uh, itself should have uh, folding and a uniform translucent quality to its pink color. This should be true both in the upper and the lower lip. Then we will retract the lower lip and inspect the mucosa, the labial mucosa and the vestibular mucosa on into the attached gingiva. We notice here in the central portion of the lower labial mucosa an area of increased keratinization that uh, is related to a lip chewing habit. And just tip your head up a little bit. We retract uh, the upper lip in the same manner and inspect uh, the labial mucosa, the vestibular uh, mucosa, and uh, mucobuccal fold area and the attached gingiva. Then we roll back the angles of the mouth and uh, inspect the 
anterior buccal mucosa. And then follow this with palpation of the entire anterior circumoral region, remembering that there are accessory salivary glands in this area and that any firm nodules uh, are worthy of uh, note and further investigation. Continue uh, our inspection and palpation into the buccal mucosa, uh, including the attached gingiva, the mucobuccal fold, the buccal mucosa proper, superiorly into the mucobuccal fold again, and back to the pterygomandibular raphe area. We repeat this uh, inspection and palpation on both sides of the mouth, and of course remembering not to obscure any significant area with our mirror. We then proceed to the inspection and palpation of the palate. Just tip your head uh, up, please. And uh, we can see in the anterior portion that there is some uh, erosion of the incisive papilla. The rugae are in their normal position, and there is a normal degree of keratinization all the way back to the junction of the hard and soft palate. Uh, just tip your head down a little bit now. We proceed then to the inspection of the soft palate, and uh, we look at the symmetry of the palatal arches. Just tip down further a bit. There we go. And uh, we see that the uvula uh, is hanging in the midline. As he uh, retracts the soft palate, uh, it uh, retracts symmetrically. Then we quickly uh, move our finger across the soft palate to determine if there are any nodules uh, deep to the surface tissue. Then we uh, focus our attention on the posterior wall of the pharynx, and uh, we are particularly concerned about the presence of any areas of redness uh, or ulceration. We also look into the tonsillar Fossi, and uh, this then completes our inspection of that area. Next, we move to the floor of the mouth and uh, inspect the anterior portion, partially with direct vision and partially with our mirror. It is necessary to uh, push the tongue aside to visualize the lateral lingual space adequately. And uh, this is then repeated on the other side. Following the inspection of the area, we place the finger on the lingual or medial aspect of the mandible and move all around this portion of the mandible. We can detect tori. We can detect alterations in the contour of the mandible in this manner. Then we proceed to the palpation of the contents of the floor of the mouth, which uh, includes in this position the submandibular salivary gland. Uh, lymph nodes may be picked up readily as the floor of the mouth is depressed. And then uh, forward and uh, medial, we find the sublingual gland. Then we uh, follow this uh, with uh, palpation of the anterior portion of the floor of the mouth and then proceeding again to the posterior portion. After completion of that uh, part of the examination, we ask the patient to open as wide as he can, to project his tongue forward as far as he can so that we can grasp the tongue with a piece of gauze. And uh, as we grasp the tongue, we rotate it first to one side, then to the other, inspecting uh, all of the tissue that is visible on the lateral aspect of the tongue, down into the ventral surface and the floor of the mouth. Then we grasp the tongue in the opposite hand and palpate and uh, repeat our palpation on both sides of the tongue. We uh, also take note that uh, we do not obscure any findings uh, on the apex of the tongue and that we inspect the uh, dorsum of the tongue, the papillae, for their presence and distribution.
Having completed this, we will then dry off the major salivary gland ducts, as we're doing here, the Horton duct orifices. And we will push upward on the floor of the mouth and uh, produce the flow of saliva from the salivary gland ducts. We then proceed to the parotid gland ducts and with gentle pressure against the cheek after drying off the duct, we can see a normal flow of clear saliva. This then uh, concludes our examination of the mouth for cancer. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.